and we are on to question three. Undergrads at it again. Will they ever get it right? Maybe this is the exam, or maybe not. We'll see. It's for you to figure out. So, ask my undergraduates to assist with some DFT analysis, looking at the binding kinetics of my magnetic rolling uh, probe experiments, um, and they've given me the following spectrums below. So, from the literature, I expect to see multiple modes of binding, each with its own characteristic binding times of 100, 20, 50, and 10 seconds, respectively. So, these are in seconds, so I need to look at, I'm expecting to see frequencies of 1 over 100, frequencies of 1 over 20, frequencies of 1 by 50, so this is 0 0.01. Uh, so let's actually write it down, figure out what are, what are the frequencies. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to quit my kernel, quit everything. I'm going to make another section, all four, question three. So my... F sub well, actually, I'm going to move it over here. So my F1 I expect to see is 1 over 100. Let me zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit nicer now that we're not looking at graphs. So F sub 1, F sub 2 is going to be equal to 1 divided by 20. Let's look at this numerically just to kind of see what we're dealing with here. So divide this, F sub 3 is going to be equal to 1 divided by 50. We'll look at this numerically, F sub 3, F sub 4 is going to be equal to uh, 1 divided by 10. So, excellent. So these are the frequencies that I need to see. So already from this, I know if I need to kind of at least measure this, I need to make sure that I sam to avoid signal aliasing, I need to sure my F sub S is greater than uh, this. So let's actually kind of pull this over here. So actually right here. So I know that my maximum frequency in the signal that I should see is going to be the 1 over 10. So my F max, F max is equal to 0 0.1 hertz. So if this is my F max, I need to make sure my F sub S is greater than twice F max if I want to measure it. So I need to make sure that I'm at least at, you know, greater than 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 hertz, I need to be greater than this, F sub S. So additionally, if I want to hit each of these kind of values, once I pick my F sub S, I need to make sure my lowest or my like uh actually my largest uh frequency or i need to make sure i have a, enough frequency resolution to hit all these values so that means if i want to hit each of these values i need to make sure that i have a delta f of at least or actually point of point one hertz because if i do n times delta f i'm gonna be able to hit each of these values so i'll hit this one when it's two times delta f i hit this when it's five i hit this when it's ten i hit this so this is the delta F I need. So, and I also have a relationship, remember that delta F equals F sub S over N. So once I, I know I have this right here, once I pick my F sub S, then I can figure out the N that I need. But again, let's see if they actually did this experiment correctly to hit these values, to sample it correctly. So for here, let's look at the values that I have. So in this experiment, I have my delta F is equal to 0.01. So again, let's go down the rabbit hole. So once I, let's kind of write out all these values. So I have here, so let's look at this. Let's make a little subsection for one. So for one, I have my del F1 is equal to 0 0.01. So if I know that, then I know my T1 is going to be one divided by del F1. I know that my, uh, let's look at the number of harmonics that we've included here. So one of the things is we see in this frequency spectrum a periodicity, right? So it's periodic. It's this, 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 and then we're going over this side. So this is not uh, my Nyquist frequency. This is actually twice my Nyquist frequency. So this is n delta f, not n divided by 2 delta f. Here, this is n divided by 2 delta f, which is equal to my f Nyquist, which is equal to 0 0.05. So that is my F Nyquist. So my F Nyquist is equal to uh, 0 0.05. So you got that. Uh, so that means, again, from our relationship in the previous problem, we know that F sub S is, e or F Nyquist is equal to F sub S over 2. So let's go ahead and write that down. F Nyquist equals F sub S over 2. Uh, so we, need to, we know that our F sub S is going to be twice our F Nyquist. So F sub S equals 2 times F Nyquist, so 0.1. So already we know, right, we're not above, uh, we need to be above 0.2, so this one's not going to work. But let's get in. We want to kind of finish out the rest of the analysis. So I know that my 
Ooh, see, this is where we're dangerous. We need to really make sure to uh, not, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> not to get a uh, math mistake wrong from this. So del, del T1 is equal to 1 divided by S of S. Uh, what else can we uh, be asked for here? So we're to any of the samples assigning my delta F, my delta T, my T, my Nyquist, my S of S, and so let's, oh, sure. yeah, so now we can do that. So now I could solve. So for my uh, del F1, set equal to F sub S1 divided by big N1. So let's solve. Hopefully this will do it automatically. So my big N1 is equal to 10. So I've got all these values. But the problem is, again, so my delta F, my delta F was okay, but my F sub S was not large enough. So uh, my F, I am going to have single aliasing, and I'll probably also have spectral leakage. here. So number one is a fail. It didn't work. It uh, didn't work. Uh, what about the second one? So let's go and move to the second problem. And we're going to do the kind of same type of analysis, right? So five. So let's look at number two. My F sub S2, or actually my del F2, is going to be equal to 0 0.1. So automatically I know I'm going to have spectral leakage, so that's no good. So that's a big, big, uh, that's a problem. Uh, but I can kind of go ahead and, so my T2 is equal to 1 divided by del F2. So we've got that. That's my period. Let me make sure I got my period there. Fantastic. So here, this signal, I don't see any periodicity here at all. So this is indeed my F Nyquist. So my F Nyquist 2 is equal to 0. Let me make sure 0. 0.4. So then I know my F sub S is equal to 2 times F Nyquist. F Y. Mm. Yeah, that was two. Uh, see, dangerous again. So that's two. So my del uh, two. Again, you could just do this by hand, but I don't. I don't like to do any math by hand <laughs> anymore. Uh, all right, got my delta t. So let's kind of look. Got my delta t, and now I could solve for the rest of those values. So I could solve for my. I know that my del f two. That equal to F sub S2 divided by big N2. Solve it. Eight. There we go. So again, still not going to work. Uh, my F sub S is not, my F sub S was horrible. I think it's, uh, my, actually, my F sub S was not too bad. My F sub S works, but the problem is my delta F does not work. So I'm not going to have signal aliasing, but I'm going to miss all, I've got so, I have so much spectral leakage because I'm not hitting any of these, I'm not hitting the 0 0.01 or the, you know, you know, any of these Fs, you know, the only point I'm hitting is my maximum frequency here. I'm missing F3, F2, so it's not going to work. My F sub S was fine, but uh, I don't have a large enough, and, you know, my delta F was horrible, and I need a large, a large number of points. Now, let's look at this last one. So let's go ahead and go to here. So I'm going to go to here, 3. So my del F3 is going to be equal to, this looks to be like, 05, 01, 015, 02. So it's 0 0.05. So already I'm going to have signal aliasing. So that's no good. Uh, let's do my T3 is equal to 1 divided by del F3. Let's find where is my Nyquist frequency. So uh, if I look at the signal, I actually see two repeats. So here, this is equal to N delta F. And this is equal to 2 and delta F. You see here, like I'm down, up, 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 or down, 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 and then it repeats. So this right here, this repeats four times. So this is my Nyquist. This is two times my Nyquist. This would be three times my Nyquist. This would be four times my Nyquist. So this is my F Nyquist. So it is 0 0.025 and then 0 0.3. So my F Nyquist, so F Nyquist 3 is equal to... 0 0.3. And then my F sub S is equal to 2 times F Nyquist 3. So that's 3 is equal to F Nyquist 3 times 2. And voila. So there we go. That's my F sub S. I could do my delta T, delta T, delta T 3 equals F sub S 1 divided by S sub S 3. And now I could go again and do the last one so I could solve for my again. So solve for del F3, set equal to F sub S3, divided by big N, N3, and 12.
So again, my S of S is fine. It's greater than 0.2 hertz. So we're good to go on that side of things. But the problem again comes into play when I look at this delta F. Not small enough. I don't have fine enough resolution. I'm going to miss, uh, again, a lot of these frequencies. I'm going to miss uh, my F1. I'm going to miss, I'll hit F2. Or I'm going to miss F3. So those are kind of the problems associated with that. So uh, at the end of the day, none of these work. But again, you're going to want to kind of go through, rat out all these uh, values, and then again, you could even propose, right? So I would have a delta F of this. So if I need that, if that's my delta F that I need, I can go ahead and let's say that I want to sample at. So my delta F is this. I need to hit here. Let's say my F sub S, I'm going to just say is equal to 0.4. I can go ahead and solve that value, right? So I could figure out what's my number of points. So solve, solve when 0 0.01. So if I have a delta F of 0 0.01, and then if I have an F sub S of 0 0.4, divided by big N, I can solve this. So if I have 40 points, then I'll be able to get it. And you can kind of look at the period, and the, you know, so you might ask, be asked a variant of that problem to kind of give, you know, what are, you know, what are the conditions that you would choose that would allow you to kind of solve this problem correctly. So that's about it. Excellent. So I will see you all in the next video as we tackle the uh, last problem already on this exam too, which is no more quantum mechanics, no problem. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.